Good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the launch of our Earth Science Activities for 2018. Often in St. Lucia, we boast that we are the country with the world's only drive-in volcano. And if you ask most persons, they will tell you that the volcano is based in Sufre. But apart from that, there is very little else that we know about our island. And in recent times, we've, we've been having um, more frequent earthquakes, and you find that persons are a little more aware of geohazards. But very little emphasis is placed on uh, um, hazards apart from, from hydromet hazards. And um, it, is against that, uh, it is against this backdrop that the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, and UE Seismic Research Center has uh, decided with the rest of the world to observe Earth Science Week. And our theme for Earth Science Week this year is Earth as Inspiration. We have a number of activities planned for this week. And Mrs. Velda Joseph, the director of the National Emergency Management Organization, will come to give a few brief remarks and give us an overview of the activities for the week. Thank you. Mrs. Joseph. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Shalry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this media launch of Earth Science Week 2018. A very special good morning to our friends and colleagues from the University of the West Indies Seismic Research Center for being here with us today and for agreeing to share your expert knowledge on this subject matter. Our media friends, Thank you for being here and for consistently providing NEMO with the opportunity to share information and to engage the public on various issues relevant to disaster management. Thank you to all of you. Colleagues, it is common knowledge that the Caribbean region is identified as one which is highly vulnerable to multiple hazards each with the potential for causing extreme devastation to our island nations. Our recent and not so recent experiences have painfully highlighted the vulnerability of our infrastructure and our people and the inevitable disruption of livelihoods and economies as a result of hazard impacts. However, as is done at every opportunity, I will emphasize the fact that St. Lucia's exposure to hazards is not limited to hydromet events, and you just heard that from our moderator, despite the frequency of those events, but that the island is vulnerable to a myriad of other hazards, both natural and man-made, which have the potential for causing loss of lives, severe destruction of physical, socioeconomical, and environmental assets as well as significant disruptions to livelihoods, as I mentioned earlier. The region's exposure to multiple hazards is clearly recognized and acknowledged within the Caribbean brand of managing disaster risk, which was conceptualized by CDMA, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, and to which St. Lucia subscribes. This brand, which is referred to as the Comprehensive Disaster Management, or CDM, as we say, challenges us to give consideration to all hazards, not some, all hazards. It challenges us to consider all phases of the disaster management cycle, to move away from the thinking that it's response that matters, but that we need to consider risk reduction and we need to consider all of the other phases before the impact as well. And it also calls on us to empower all sectors towards building a culture of safety. In taking up this challenge, NEMO will, over the course of this week and beyond, maintain adequate focus on the geological hazards of particular interest to St. Lucia. And for this, we're focusing on earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanoes. And we'll constantly seek to share information towards improved resilience of the nation. I remember a few years ago at a NEMAC meeting, we were challenged by the then Prime Minister to place more emphasis on earthquakes. I think at the time, it was around 2016, that's when we had the burst of earthquakes in July of that year. And he said, I want more emphasis on earthquakes. And we have tried, but I suppose within the limits of our resources, we have not been as successful as we would like to be. But we want to take up that challenge again and to place emphasis on hazards 
other than the met hazards. We recognize that even when we are battling waves and troughs, that we can have earthquakes as was experienced not too long ago. So we need to make sure that our nation is ready. The observance of Earth Science Week in St. Lucia is therefore designed to foster a greater awareness and understanding of the geological hazards and also to provide some encouragement and motivation for adoption of preparedness measures by the public to preserve life and property. We do not want to help us in saying that you cannot prepare for an earthquake. There's nothing we can do because it cannot be predicted. There are things that can be done and throughout this week we will be sharing with the public um, various target audiences. What are some of the things that you can do at household level? What are some of the things that can be done at community level? And at the national level, what are some of the things that we are going to be engaging? In keeping with this year's theme, Earth as Inspiration, the National Emergency Management Organization, in partnership with UWE SRC, will host a range of engaging activities to commemorate Earth Science Week 2018. These activities will take place in various parts of the island. We are not leaving anybody behind. Nothing is concentrated in castries. We are going all around the island, and we will target particular groups at varying times. So what do we have for this week? Let us take a look and I'm going to go through the program to just give you a brief synopsis of what is planned for this week. So today we have this media launch and we will also be telling you about a jingle. We have with us a representative from the Ministry of, Agri of Education. Good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the launch of our Earth Science Activities for 2018. Often in St. Lucia, we boast that we are the country with the world's only drive-in volcano. And if you ask most persons, they will tell you that the volcano is based in Sufre. But apart from that, there is very little else that we know about our island. And in recent times, we've, we've been having um, more frequent earthquakes, and you find that persons are a little more aware of geohazards. But very little emphasis is placed on um, hazards apart from, from hydromet hazards. And um, it, is against that, uh, it is against this backdrop that the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, and UE Seismic Research Center has decided with the rest of the world to observe Earth Science Week. And our theme for Earth Science Week this year is Earth as Inspiration. We have a number of activities planned for this week. And Mrs. Velda Joseph, the director of the National Emergency Management Organization, will come to give a few brief remarks and give us an overview of the activities for the week. Thank you. Tomorrow, Tuesday, November 13th, we are looking at Region 3 for a school presentation. And that will take place at the Entripo HRDC. We also have a session with the Methodist School at, at, uh, in Castries at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Now, the Methodist School is the one school uh, where there's the exception, um, but that was because we had another session that we had to replace. Uh, so we included the Methodist School in that, in that session. Tomorrow afternoon, Region 4 will be the focus. That will be held at the John Odlum Secondary School. And again, we are engaging the schools, the secondary schools in that region for the presentation. And then we go to the communities. We are not leaving our community persons behind. If you know my, my background, you know that I'm very strong on communities and community engagement. So we have one community meeting in Miku, and we really want to encourage all persons from the Miku district. Miku North, Miku South, it's also my district, so I would love to have a full town hall, a full house at the, at the, Miku, sec at the Miku Primary School to engage the team in discussions on the subject. On Wednesday, we have Region 5. We remain in the South, so we have Region 5. The school presentation is taking place in Miku as well. We are looking at the... Okay, I'm sorry. We have changed the venue for that. So that is taking place in Denry. We are at Chateau Heritage with that presentation for Region 5. 
and then a small group will be on straight up so you can encourage your friends to tune into straight up on wednesday morning to have a discussion with claudius francis on those um the threat of the geological hazards to saint lucia that is a call-in for the sake of our partners from src that's a call-in uh, program so it allows us to also engage the public in discussions in the afternoon we have region six and that's taking place in viewfort at the nsdc building and later on we have a presentation with liaison officers of the NEMO system. So NEMO as an organization has liaison officers in all of the agencies, government ministries, private sector entities. And we want to make sure that these people, when they speak and they speak about those hazards, that they have the correct information because they are really representing the National Disaster Management System in St. Lucia. So there's a special session for all of them. I have to say that this session is heavily subscribed. We have gotten many confirmations for that session. So we look forward to that session being a very enjoyable, very engaging, very informative session. On Thursday morning, Region 7 and 8, we have combined Region 7 and 8 uh, for a discussion. We will inform of the venue for that presentation. And we do also have a lecture, a public lecture in the south of the island at 11. That's taking place at the Ports Police Barrack at the UNR International Airport. That's for our persons in the south of the island. Um, it's an open forum. We have invited a number of stakeholders to join us in that session. So we do also en envisage an enjoyable session um, in Viewfort. After lunch on um, Thursday, the 15th, we have a technical presentation to A-level students of the Viewfort Comprehensive secondary school, my alma mater, but that's not why it was selected. <laughs> there was a special request from that school to have a presentation once they knew about Earth Science Week. So we will be facilitating that at uh, 1.30 to 3 on Thursday afternoon. And then we move to Schwozel for the second community meeting um, to discuss the, the issues at hand. On Friday morning, we encourage all entities to participate in an earthquake drill. And, and encourage your, uh, your staff, encourage individuals to practice the earthquake drill. Let us try to practice the job cover hold and evacuate. Let us see how well you have evacuate out of your building. Too often people know, um, we've seen many cases, people know what it is, but everybody would just panic. And we believe that if you practice enough, when it happens, you will automatically go into that routine and you will do what you have practiced. So we want to ensure that we begin to have more uh, drills so that persons are better familiar with what it is that they're required to do. We will also be hosting some public e education booths at Massey stores, both in the north and in the south, um, Castries and Viewfort. And we will be using our volunteers to man those booths to just share information with the public on the hazards that we are discussing. And our final activity is a mini exhibition um, that we dub Inspired by Earth based on the, um, the theme for the Earth Science Week that we will be having at the Castries City Hall. I have to say that we are very encouraged by the number of persons who have indicated that they would like to share um, and they would be willing to display their information. It is not going to be a paper type um, exhibition, so don't expect to see a lot of um, paper being distributed. We want it to be practical so that persons are involved in doing things that they will remember post the, the exhibition. And then I think by now, by the end of the week, the team will be very tired and ready to go back to Trinidad. Mm -hmm. So we will just have an outbriefing meeting with uh, our authorities, and then we can say goodbye to our colleagues and our friends. So that is the week that is the program that we have for the week and just before i take my seat i have to say uh, thank you to a number of persons uh, in particular i'd like to highlight the the small coordinating team who helped with the planning and the logistics for all of this avalon chalry um, who is with us she's been with us um, persons are wondering whether she's now with nemo and not with met office but she's been with us organizing this whole thing and i really want to say thank you to you avalon um bonus uh who functions in the capacity of school safety uh, officer 
Kodra has been working very closely with the National Emergency Management Organization, and he came on board to actually help us plan and make sure that all schools were involved in receiving uh, presentations. We have Miss Epifan, Chrissy. Chrissy has been quite busy uh, sending out letters, calling people to confirm, making sure that the place is decorated. Chrissy, you know, has this little extra touch. It has to be decorated. Thank you so much, Chrissy. We have Maria Meda. Maria is not here with us today. Uh, Maria is in Japan on training, but uh, I know she's with us in spirit. She kept on messaging and calling on WhatsApp to find out whether everything is okay for the week. So we're very happy um, that she, she is still in tune with us. We have others, Daniel, Job, everybody came on board to make sure that we, the activities for the week, the logistics in terms of moving items, moving chairs, making sure venues are ready. I want to thank you so very much um, and to all of the rest of you at NEMO. Our team from the SRC, thank you so much again. Uh, we really do appreciate your efforts um, in terms of making sure that everything uh, runs smoothly and for bearing with us, even when we were late with our submissions. So thank you very much for making sure that it all came together uh, quite nicely. I look forward to a really awesome week with you guys in St. Lucia and ensuring that all of the activities that we have planned uh, come off successfully. So thank you so much, everyone. Please join the rest of the sessions that we have outlined and have a great day. Thanks. Thank you to Mrs. Joseph for her brief uh, comments and highlighting the schedule for the week. You see the, the great emphasis that we've placed on schools. The Ministry of Education has been a great partner in planning for mm -hmm. Science Week. And we have Mr. Bunez Kojua, the uh, Ministry of Education School Safety Officer here with us and he will give us uh, some brief remarks. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the Ministry of Education, I want to say a big thank you for the opportunity where we can play our part in terms of building resilience as it relates to Earth and taking care of our Earth. My role today is that of looking at resilience among our young people. And resilience refers to an individual's capacity to successfully adapt to change and stressful events in healthy and constructive ways. That was written by Catalino et al. in 2002. Young people regularly face great hurdles to get their voices heard, while research and practice in the disaster and climate change community <coughs> commonly represent young people as passive victims requiring protection. Consequently, their capacities to inform decision-making processes communicate risks to their communities and take direct action to reduce risks have been neglected. Tackling causes and impacts of climate change has emerged as a major global challenge of the 21st century. Given the potential for climate change to alter distribution and severity of extreme weather events, adapt adaptation to climate change can draw from many policies and practices in DRR. DRR represents a change in emphasis from huma humanitarian response and rehabilitation following disaster events towards disaster prevention and reduction of potential risks. This entails affording greater attention to social, economic, and political factors that influence social vulnerability rather than just the nature of the hazard and local environmental conditions. Vulnerability to climate change and disasters has often been conceptualized as passive and victimhood particularly emerging from post-disaster studies that identify particularly vulnerable groups. This conceptualization is common in literature linking children with climate change and disasters. However, a growing body of empirical research and practice is emerging 
that counters this vulnerability narrative. Instead, emphasizing young people's capacities to influence and participate directly in efforts to learn about, prevent, prepare for, cope with, and adapt to climate change and extreme events. Young people's participation in DRR and adaptation may therefore be conceptualized in multiple modes, including contextualizing knowledge using analytical tools and prioritizing actions, advocacy and mobilization, building coalitions with parents, community members, and other stakeholders, conception, design, and implementation of projects that tackle climate and disaster risk pertinent to children's lives. In St. Lucia, we are exposed to natural hazards and climate-related shocks, and the impact of our society has been aggravated by many unplanned developments. Climate change is projected to lead to more severe events such as droughts, floods, hurricanes, and the Caribbean region in particular has recently experienced an increased number of extreme weather events. In many Caribbean islands, there are indications that extensive risks corresponding to high hazard events such as yearly floods and storms is increasingly affecting the infrastructure in both rural and urban areas, keeping it highly vulnerable. Of late, we are seeing a higher frequency of earthquakes and the possibility of tsunami as a result. The Sendai Framework of 2015 to 2030 uses a wide-scale people-centered approach to disaster risk reduction that applies to both large and small-scale disasters caused by natural or man-made hazards, as well as related environmental, technological, and biological disasters. With seven targets and four priorities for action, it aims to limit the adverse impacts of hazards within the broader context of sustainable development. The implementation of the framework requires strong political leadership, youth engagement, and commitment. St. Lucia has a large share of its population being youth, with young people between the ages of 15 to 29 making up around 26% of the population. With new youth-led and youth-oriented programs flourishing and more young people utilizing information and communication technologies, St. Lucia's youth are now better able to voice opinions, address existing problems, and shape community priorities as well as actively partake in the process of building resilience. The Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction recognizes the role played by the different stakeholders, especially the youth, in making the disaster risk reduction process a successful one, and by extension, building resilience. Children and youth are agents of change and should be given the space and modalities to contribute to disaster risk reduction in accordance with legislation national practice and educational curricula. The school safety program of the Ministry of Education places emphasis on youth involvement through one, youth advocacy in building community resilience, two, role of social media and new technologies in disaster risk reduction, three, children and youth education in building resilience, Four, importance of engaging youth in DRR planning processes. And five, role of youth volunteers in DRR. Building resilience in young people is an important goal if we are to strengthen capacity and promote skills that help to reduce mental health problems. One way to foster resilience in young people is through meaningful youth participation, that is, decision-making 
by young people that involves meaning, control, and connectedness. Whilst youth participation may occur in recognition of young people's rights to be involved in all decisions that affect them, meaningful participation can itself enhance a young person's sense of connectedness, belonging, and valued participation, and thereby impact on mental health and well-being. The Ministry of Education remains committed in involving the youth and all other stakeholders as we work together to build a more resilient nation and people. And so, in so doing, we have partnered with the National Emergency Management Organization in launching our jingle competition as we, as we focus on volcanoes for this jingle. And we have brought on board our music curriculum officer along with other music teachers. And as we launch this activity, we are hoping that in March of 2019, the competition will actually take place then. And so it is our pleasure again to have partnered with Nemo in this venture. I thank you. Without our partners from the UE Seismic Research Center, this week of activities would not have been possible. And so we have Dr. Patricia Joseph, a volcanologist with the uh, UE Seismic Center, who will give a few brief remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind comments, Mr. Joseph. Good morning, everyone. The UWI Seismic Research Center celebrates Earth Science Week annually in one of the countries that we monitor. This year, we are pleased to, in collaboration with NEMO, to celebrate Earth Science Week in St. Lucia. Um, this education and outreach campaign allows us to visit schools and various stakeholders on, on island and provide information on new research and on geological hazards that can impact St. Lucia. We hope that the messages, the key messages that we present all of this week on earthquake safety and knowing more about your volcano can help raise awareness among the public and that we can encourage bright young minds in St. Lucia to pursue a career in earth sciences. This year's theme, um, as Mrs. Joseph mentioned, is Earth as inspiration, and we believe that St. Lucia is an ideal island in which to celebrate this theme. We look forward to this week's event and hope that we encourage the public to come out as we can all be better prepared and informed for any geological event. Thank you very much. We have a few minutes now. If anyone needs any clarification on the activities planned for this week, um, we'll open the floor now to any questions. Okay, thank you. I guess Mrs. Joseph was very clear <laughs> on what's happening this week. <laughs> we would like to thank uh, the media houses that came out this morning for our media launch. We're very thankful to our specially invited guests who came to celebrate our opening of Earth Science Week. And we're especially grateful to our partners from UE Seismic Research Center who came all the way from Trinidad to observe Earth Science Week with us. Um, thank you very much to the staff of NEMO. I know it has been two weeks of, um, yes, <laughs> and especially Chrissy. I know we've put a lot, a lot of pressure on you, and we're very grateful for your assistance. We look forward to the participation of everyone here um, in the activities for this week. We hope that we see you at the community meetings, and we hope that we have coverage from the media, especially at our school functions and our fair on Friday. We have a number of partners. We have a number of, of exciting things that we're expecting on Friday, promotions from different companies and so on. So we hope that we have uh, um, assistance from the media in promoting our fair on Friday. Mm -hmm.